I'm finally on extinction after beating the island, scorched earth, and aberration. And it's currently day one or day 401 of my 1000 day journey to beat all 6 arc story maps in 1000 in game days. But if I want to defeat the alpha king titan in only 200 days I'm going to spend on this map, I don't have any time to waste. So I quickly got to gathering some nearby resources to craft a stone pickaxe and then use that stone pickaxe to craft a stone hatchet. And by now you guys might be like, Grant, your game looks really good right now. Did you get a new PC? I got a new PC. And an OSC just fell out of the sky over there. Well, I can't defend one of those for loot anytime soon, but I can't smack these tables for crystal to make a spyglass. And while taming this low level horse I just found, I'll tell you about my new rig. It has an i9 3900K and an RTX 4090. And for those of you who aren't PC nerds, it's basically top of the line parts, so I can now run ARK in 4K, sitting around 70 FPS. In other games, I'd be getting around 150 FPS, but since ARK is horribly optimized, I have to deal with it. Anyways, my horse tamed and I named it Larry. I then proceeded to run around killing some small dinos for hide and crafting myself some tools like a bow and some bolas. And also, this isn't the exact character I had back on Aberration. I don't think I can really transfer characters across computers, so I just made a new one and gave it similar stats and the boss engrams and ascensions I had. And later on, I spotted a level 102 Carno that would be a really strong mount to protect me right now, so I need to set up a small base to farm up a trap for it. But as I was farming the resources to do that, Larry was killed. What? Larry. I even put him in a tree where I thought he'd be safe, but I guess not. Anyways, I still wanted to tame that Carno, so I spent the rest of the day farming up a stone trap while I had meat cooking in a campfire to keep me fed. And it's day two. Jeez. Day one was insanely long. I'm playing 35 to 40 minute days. I don't know the exact number, but all my settings I use will be linked in the description. Anyways, I had the trap all crafted up, and I need some narcotics now to actually trank out the Carno. So I set up a thatch foundation in some random corner to go farm narcotics with. And while I was farming said narcotics, I spotted a level 174 PT. Oh my. And that PT is now my main priority because a near max level flyer this early in the game is game changing. So yeah, I ran over to the bird when it landed and knocked it out with like three trank arrows. Moving on, I killed a nearby Ovis for some mutton to tame the PT which I named Flappy. And for the rest of the day, I spent getting explore notes to level up my bird and crafted a forge to start smelting metal. Day three, I added smithy, but more importantly, I was experiencing lag spikes. This should not be happening on my new PC. And I'll put an example on screen now. And for those of you who don't see it and think I'm crazy, it's literally right there. And this would continue for a few days until I finally found somewhat of a solution after I dove deep into the trenches of my graphic card settings. Anyways, I need to actually focus on things that are happening right now. So I farmed some more metal to have the forge smelt it into ingots while I was doing other things. And by other things, I mean farming even more narcotics because there's a level 174 ankylo literally seven feet from my starter base so i proceeded to trank it out while i was having lag spikes every time i turned my character more than two degrees anyways after putting spikes around the ankylo when it was unconscious the rest of the day was just kind of spent mindlessly walking around but what i was really doing was watching how to fix my lag spike problems on my other monitor and speaking of things to do while arc is being arc is to play World of Tanks. World of Tanks is an epic free-to-play battle slash war game where you get to play as you guessed it, literal tanks. Seriously, you can roll across the battlefield with your boys lighting up the enemy like there's no tomorrow. And World of Tank features tank destroyers, artillery, and light, medium, and heavy tanks. So how you play is really up to you. You can rush in guns blazing or sit back and take out your enemies from afar. But personally, I like the first option a lot more. But that's not all because in World of Tanks, history meets action. The tanks featured in World of Tanks are authentic models and their characteristics makes you feel like you're a real tank commander going into the battle of your life. So literally, what are you waiting for? Download World of Tanks today and use the code TANKMANIA as seen on screen and claim your free Excelsior, 250,000 credits, a 7-day premium access, and 3 rental takes for 10 battles, each being the Tiger 131, Cromwell B, and T3485M. And once again, go down to the first link in the description and download World of Tanks today. Day 4, I had the Anklio saddle and also a decent amount of oil and electronics. Tech dinos are all over this map, so don't be surprised later on when I have mountains of the stuff. Anyways, a few minutes later, the Anklio tamed, and I named it 4K Metal Farmer now, because it'll be farming metal in 4K now. But anyways, now that I have an Anklio, I want an RG to carry it. So I quickly farmed up a simple RG trap. I then flew out to the green obelisk on the west side of the sanctuary because that's the only place where RGs spawn in the city. But there was only like a total of four RGs and they're all terrible levels, so I had to venture out into the wasteland for the first time. And as I was flying around the sunken forest entrance, I spotted a level 144 RG and a level 168. And I'm only gonna tame the level 168 because I don't have the resources to tame both right now. The RG only took a few minutes into day 5 to tame and I named it Chick. And if any of you are confused why it's not dark like 3 a.m in game time is because outside of the biodomes there's no day night cycle and this is actually explained in arcs lore because the earth is tidally locked extinction obviously facing the sun at all times moving on getting back to my base took forever because i had to lead the rg back on whistle follow command because i didn't have any cryopods yet but now i had the farm for resources to craft an rg saddle and while i was farming them i found the level 180 pteranodon i love extinction in its high levels obviously i knocked the bird out so i could have a good breeding pair and i gathered all the rest of the resources i need to craft the rg saddle most notably chitin and for the remainder of the day i once again 
again flew around the sanctuary getting explore notes leveling up my RG. Day 6 I was still trying to find some explore notes to level up my bird. I haven't played Extinction that much compared to other maps so I only knew where like a total of 3 explore notes were and I had already gotten them. But I did manage to get some cementing paste from nearby beaver dam so it wasn't a total loss. Anyway when I returned to my base there were some defense units attacking my Ankleo but they were pretty quickly dealt with. So now that I have an RG I can ride I think it's time to move to a more permanent base location and I chose the nearby Colosseum. And it was pretty big, had a city terminal where I could craft element dust into element, and had a naturally surrounded barrier that would be easy to fill with gates to completely block off the area. So I crafted a decent amount of stone foundations and even lower them to be somewhat level with the terminal. Day 7 I crafted a few structures I would need like smithies, forges, and a fabricator I managed to scrape together. Then moved over all of my items and some tames as well as crafted some wooden storage boxes. And after that I farmed up a bunch of wood and put about 2 stacks into each of my 10 forges. I wanted to go on a big metal run so I could have a big supply as fast as possible. The thing is my RG's weight isn't exactly where I wanted to be, so I once again flew around looking for explore notes to quickly level it up, they're like impossible to find for me at this point. I returned to my base in the morning of day 8 and farmed a few hundred narco berries to craft some narcotics with, and by now my RG had some somewhat actual decent weight to do a metal run with, and I desperately needed metal, so I flew out and managed to find a few groups of 2 or 3 metal nodes in the southern part of the sanctuary, and that would be enough for now. I don't think Extinction really has any condensed resources locations like the island's metal mountain or Aberration's entire blue zone being filled with metal. Everything is kind of just scattered across the map. Anyways, I got the forges burning and then I crafted up some trank arrows and stone dinosaur gates because I want to tame a gas bag. While gas bags don't do like any damage and are pretty easy to kill, they are one of the best flyers on the map. They are really fast and usually have around 4,000 weight or more if you tame a high enough level. But the only problem is though, they spawn in the wasteland. But there just so happened to be a level 132 fleeing from some corrupted dinos that was all alone. So it was a prime target for being abducted. I managed to first trap the inflating jelly bean with some wooden billboards and then I secured it so it couldn't float away with some stone dinosaur gates. And these boys take a lot of tranks to knock out. Day 10 I had to run back to my base real quick to get some mayo berries for the gas bag to tame. And I also crafted some gilly the day before because it's super hot in the wasteland so don't lose your cool that I didn't show that Karen. After that I farmed a bit more chitin for the surprisingly cheap gas bag saddle and tamed it around midday. I named it poop bag because it's brown but most importantly I forgot how fun these things are to fly. And you really only want to upgrade oxygen and salmon on these guys so you can just fly farther. And now that I have good maneuverability around the map, there's a lot of stuff I still want to tame. And I need cryopods to transport them around the map, so I killed a few corrupted creatures for the corrupted nodules, as corrupted nodules act as organic polymer. So yeah, I flew, floated out to the King Titan terminal in the back of the map, because you can't craft cryopods in city terminals for whatever reason. And now that I have cryopods, I want a chodic. Dodic. I actually found the level 174 Dodic on day 12, and I managed to get it in a safe isolated area by farting on it with my gas bag. <laughs> And while my future rock farmer was taming, I spotted a level 168 Velanosaur. One, I forgot these things existed. Two, I want to tame some of those. That one especially, because if you don't know, Velanosaurs are basically portable turrets that use stamina instead of bullets. Anyways, I returned to my base and crafted a Dodic saddle and a log neck because I wasn't a brokey anymore. But now that my Dodic is tamed, I want to start making some dinosaur gates I was talking about back on day 6 to protect my base. I'll come back and tame that Velanosaur in a few days. Days 13 and 14 were both spent farming and placing stone dinosaur gate frames around the perimeter of the Coliseum. By day 15, almost all of my metal was smelted and I had a bunch of charcoal. So I crafted a few mortar and pestles and did a flint run to make myself some gunpowder for bullets. I also finally bred my PTs, but I wouldn't just hatch the egg just yet because I wanted to go tame some Velanosaurs. I can't decide if Velos are hard or easy to tame. They move slowly so you can just block them with wooden billboards, but they are also lasering you down with needles the whole time. And I managed to find the female level 168 I found a few days prior. And it wasn't too hard to trap, besides the fact that it broke my leggings in two seconds. The Velo tamed pretty much as soon as was day 16, and I don't know if it's good or not, but I'm not complaining. However, I want another male Velo so I can have a breeding pair. And after not too long of flying around, I spotted another level 168, which I quickly trapped and tamed. After that, I returned to my base and prepared my flak because it got melted off taming Velos, and I crafted a bunch of gunpowder with the spark powder and charcoal I farmed back on day 15. Moving on, I actually had more than enough metal for an indie forge somehow. I just needed a few other resources like corrupted nodules. And towards the end of the day, my Velos popped out their first fertilized egg, then I tamed an otter. But don't get too attached, it's definitely gonna die soon just like the other 17 in the series. I lost count how many otters I had back on the island. Day 17 I crafted my first generator and air conditioner so I could hatch my velo egg and PT egg you all forgot I had already. The velo egg hatched with pretty mid stats so don't worry about it but the PT on the other hand was amazing. I then proceeded to spend 10 minutes raising and imprinting the two because they grow up pretty fast and after that I sat AFK for the rest of the day. I was probably just dropping a deuce IRL and forgot to pause the game but I was back and actively playing on day 18 but more importantly I was shooting down every creature inside the 
the Colosseum with my new imprinted Valon sword. So I spent half of the day on the wasteland massacring literally everything in my path. It's super easy to take down dinos when you're outputting like 400 damage a second somehow. What the? And it's also really efficient for farming resources like hide. And moving on, I hatched two more Bolanosaur eggs, which were both terrible. And for the rest of the day, I farmed stone, wood, and began actually putting the gate doors into the gate frames because I was tired of having wild dinos wandering into my base. But I would soon learn this would all be basically useless because dinos can still spawn in my base. I finished putting in the gate doors in the morning of day 19. And after that, I spent basically the entirety of day 19 out in the wasteland farming corrupted nodules with my Velo. But at the very end of the day, I managed to craft an industrial forge and a fridge. I demolished and placed in the new forge in the morning of day 20. And now I have basically no metal, so I flew out into the wasteland for a pretty big metal run. And I also got jump scared by a corrupted reaper I didn't hear coming while I was eating. <laughs> That very easily could have been the end of me, my RG, and my Anki. That also would have been the end of my play session, because I definitely would have rage quit. But I managed to get the metal safely back to my base, and then I added some more foundations before getting some raw meat to feed the seven velo eggs I'm gonna hatch. It's crazy how fast these things reproduce. The first part of day 21 was spent raising the baby velos and crafting saddles for them so they wouldn't be so squishy in a fight. As I said earlier, I want to use these guys to defend element veins and orbital supply drops, so it's really important they do not die. Later on, I looted some beaver dams for more cementing paste and saddled up three of my velos for a long journey to the desert cave. Mantis is spawned in the desert cave and they drop a lot of organic polymer and chitin so I decided to make the journey out there because I wanted to craft some vaults and going out in the wasteland and hunting for corrupted dinos doesn't sound too fun. But I should have just gone into the wasteland because after leaving my base I was jumped by a max level megalosaurus and a capro at the same time. Hey bitch! No! 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 What? No! I did manage to get my stuff back right before the end of the day, but it was still traumatizing. Pretty much all of day 22 was spent walking out to the desert cave, and when I finally got there, murdering everything inside of it. But I was right to think that I would get more than enough organic polymer for a while, and I'll also never have to farm chitin ever again. I got back to my base about halfway through day 23 because there was a meteor shower keeping me from traveling through the wasteland. I know I could have just grown a pair of balls, but I didn't feel like getting exploded by a meteor. Anyways, I spent like 10 minutes killing random tech dinos around the sanctuary for electronics and oil so I could craft one of the most game-breaking items of all time. But I have to get back to my base right now to craft it. I crafted four bolts. Yeah, I know I overhyped them, but I needed it to be dramatic for me getting stuck to be funny. Anyways, I crafted some wooden catwalks and placed my vaults above my smithies and fabricator. I spent the first few minutes of day 24 sorting out my items into vaults and then crafting some Bolanosaur saddles. I had around eight velos fully imprinted with saddles ready to go, and all I had to do was just level them. So I leveled up one for a few minutes by eliminating literally everything in the surrounding area before placing more cables under my foundations in my base and finally placing the fridge I made a few days ago. Now my velos are pretty strong, and I think they will only get stronger when killing corrupted dinos, so I think it's time to do an OSD or element vein, whichever I find first. So I took a quick lap around the wasteland on my gas bag and found an element vein with 10k health. And for those of you who don't know, element veins can either spawn with 10k, 25k, 50k, or maybe 100k HP. I don't know if 100k element veins are actually a thing or not, so let me know in the comments. But the difficulty of the amount of corrupted dinos and how strong they are is the dependent level on the element vein. The lower the element vein, the easier it is. And I think I can easily take down a 10k element in vain with my velo, so I returned to my base and grabbed a few things I would need like canteens. Day 25, I started the grand trek out of the sanctuary and into the depths of the wasteland with my velo packed towards the element vein. But when I finally arrived to the element vein, it had despawned, but there was a blue OSD literally right next to where it was. I guess Ark is trying to make up for taking a whole element vein away from me. And OSDs are like element veins, but instead of element, they drop loot that's supposed to be good, but it's rare that it actually is. And there's four variants of OSDs, being blue, yellow, red, and purple. Blue being the easiest, and purple being literally impossible for a solo player like me. Anyways, I started doing the blue OST, killing a few weak dinos that spawned in each wave. And I only made it through like the first or second wave before a whole corrupted Giga spawned no. literally on top of my velos. That's not even supposed to spawn when you're doing an OSD. It literally just spawned naturally. At first, I tried fighting it, but I was panicking and didn't think my pack would be able to kill it, so I just whistled followed on my pack and managed to peace out while the Giga got distracted. Well, I'm not gonna go back to that drop anytime soon. And after that, I returned to my base and made some dino leashes. They basically just keep your dinos from leaving a certain area, so I figured they would be useful to keep my velos near the dropper vein I'm supposed to be protecting. And I still want to complete a dropper vein, so I flew around and found another blue OSD, and it went much smoother than the last one. I completed the 
the OSD about two thirds of the way into day 26 and it was not worth doing. I could probably get better loot from killing random dinos around my base. Anyways, after that huge waste of time, I returned to my base and threw up my velos so that they could heal as well as craft more dino leeches because they are actually pretty useful. Moving on, for the rest of the day, I farmed up a bunch of narcotics because I want to tame a mana gamarmar. Okay, I still don't know how to say it, but I want one of those fast ice jumpy boys. They are really strong and fast, but that's also the same reason they're a pain to tame. And also, they like to attack literally everything within a mile radius of them, so keeping their attention to lure them into a trap is near impossible. Day 27, I had the weird trap you need to tame in. I also even had trank darts to try and make this as quick as painless as possible. Warning, the following content will be aggravating to watch and may cause you to throw your phone punch your monitor, or hurl your remote at your TV screen for those of you weirdos who watch a 16-year-old play ARK on your living room TV. I set up to the Arctic Biodome, and after only a few minutes of looking, I spotted level 138, which was more than good enough for now. I found a relatively flat spot nearby to trap it, but when I was building the trap, my IQ reduced to zero, and I couldn't figure out how to build the trap. What? Even though I literally had the tutorial on my other monitor. So I had to demolish the first trap and fall over to some trees and rocks to refarm another. And then I even messed up the second trap and ran out of foundation support. But that didn't even matter, because the man had died trying to fight two woolly mammoths. No! But not to worry, because after 10 minutes of searching, a level 156 spawned right next to where the 138 died. And I also watched it die to mammoths again. Day 28, I got a level 162 mana into the trap that was literally outside of the Arctic Biodome somehow. But looking back now, it was probably a good thing since I didn't have a bunch of woolly mammoths to attack. Anyways, I knocked out the mana and nearly instantaned it since they lose food when they jump around trying to get out of the trap. And I didn't know it at the time, but the stats were really good. After returning to my base and crafting a saddle from a new main travel companion, I spent the rest of the day killing corrupted rexes in the back of the wasteland to power level it. I got it to around 15k health and 5k stamina and then just pumped stray melee into it for the rest of the playthrough so the ice breast was basically like a minigun that freezes you at the same time. Day 29 my mana was now an apex predator so I decided I want to take on an element vein with a few help from my velos. I spent most of the day searching the wasteland and I managed to find a 10k vein that was perfect and I'm gonna be honest with you guys I have no idea how to edit defending element veins or OSCs to be entertaining. So the council of the four brain cells I have left decided to put weird music and a picture of my cat over the defense footage. Enjoy! What? Where was Kipper, dude? I haven't seen him in like 15 days. As you can see, I got around 100 element from the vein, which is okay for now, but I'm gonna need a lot more for the things I have planned. Anyways, when I returned to my base, I started crafting the element dust into element in the city terminal, and I farmed a bunch of oil and electronics for some reason, even though I want to craft a tech replicator. But speaking of tech replicator, I loaded up most of my metal and poly into my gas bag and put them in the King Titan terminal. And to end off day 30, I farmed hundreds of crystal, literally in seconds with my Ankleo. Days 31 through 34, I spent farming black pearls by killing large corrupted dinos. My god, was this horrible. I did a metal run towards the end of day 34 because I needed more metal for the replicator, but you guys need to understand. I spent hours killing random corrupted dinos just to get one or two black pearls at a time. Sometimes I didn't even get any at all. And there's only two ways to get black pearls on extinction to my knowledge. You can either kill hundreds of corrupted dinos like I did or tame gatches. But at the time, I thought it would be faster to kill dinos, but boy was I wrong. Day 35, I did another big metal run so I actually had metal to craft stuff with when I had the tech replicator. I then delivered even more resources to to the terminal just to see I need even more metal ingots and polymers. So I farmed some cementing paste and corrupted nodules by killing even more corrupted dinos. Now, I thought I had everything to craft the replicator on day 36, but I capped the terminal with corrupted nodules and there wasn't enough space for the rest. So I have to craft actual hard polymers, so it's good I grabbed the cementing paste earlier on. Anyway, when I returned to my base, I had to look up where obsidian is on extinction and it was in the sunken forest, so it basically took the whole day to get there, farm it, and then come back. I had all the polymer I needed on day 37 so I could craft a tech replicator replicator on day 37. Yeah, don't mind me, I'm just out here being the best arc player to ever walk the arcs and earth. I spent a little while trying to figure out where to place the replicator, but I managed to find a good spot where I could have an efficient crafting area. I don't really know why I made such a small crafting area when I literally have one of the biggest base locations I've ever had. Like, I had a bigger one back on the island when I was living on tree platforms. Moving on, I formed some element dust, but more importantly, crystal with only a few swings for my dodic. But if I want to craft more tech items, I'm gonna need more black pearls, and I'm not gonna kill any more corrupted dinos. So, I spent the rest of the day taming gachas in search of one that can produce black pearls for me passively. A little less than halfway through day 38, I got a gacha that produces black pearls. Oh, yes. 
Like bro. I actually got one way faster than I thought I would. I only tamed like 20 gachas before this one that I just left totted around the second forest. And I'm not gonna lie, I've never done a full playthrough of Extinction before this video, so I have no idea how gachas worked. All I knew is that they ate war maps and stones. So I crafted up a bunch of war maps, but I realized I'm one of the laziest people to walk the earth, and I didn't feel like doing that anymore, so I just farmed up a bunch of stone and filled his inventory for him to start producing black pearl crystals. To defeat the King Titans, I'm gonna need to tame Titans, but I'm also gonna need an army of Gigas to do some good damage before probably they all get stomped to death. So I checked out near the Arctic Biodome, but all I found was a car crow that would magically <laughs> disappear in a tiny wipe. Anyway, the gacha was actually producing decent black pearl amounts, and I wouldn't have to worry about farming black pearls ever again. And later on the day, I actually spotted a yellow OSC, which was a bit harder than blue tots, but it should be doable with my mana and a few velos. So I grabbed a few of my elite soldiers and started the drop defense. It was pretty easy, the only problem was that the corrupted paracers would take forever to die, so some of the smaller dinos would be able to attack the drop, but they never did any concerning amount of damage. I encountered my first enraged trike on day 40 and honestly it was kind of the joke like the arthrodes were more of a threat and here is the loot i got from the drop definitely a step up from the blue drop but still meh i then flew home and sorted out all my loot as well as crafted a holoscope for my new shotgun i got as well as crafted a chemistry bench for day 40 i'd say i'm doing pretty good and it really helps i'm playing on fibercraft started day 41 by farming some wood and then expanding my stone platform i'm gonna need to construct a hatching area soon so better to start earlier than later but that's boring right now so i want to do something more on. By that I mean tame a snow owl because I believe snow owl poop is good for gacha production. Yeah, they literally like to eat shit. After a bit of looking around in the Arctic, I found a level 168 snow owl who would also be good to heal my dinos with their freezing healing ability. Half of day 42 was spent doing another 10k element vein, but I got even less element than the first time, which is a big bummer. This primitive pickaxe is really not cutting it anymore, and neither is 10k element veins. But after that, I did some basic grinding, like cracking open gacha crystals for black pearls, and crafting myself some more shotgun bullets and another mana trap, because I want to tame another. Oh my god! I started day 43 with farming some narcotics so I could actually knock out the mana. And I then proceeded to spend the whole day actually looking for a decent male to tame, but I didn't find one. I seriously want to fight the employee at Wildcard who made mana so hard to find and tame. But I guess the Wildcard employee is safe because I found a level 156 where I tamed my current mana last time. And once again, it's pretty easy to tame it when it's in the trap. And when I returned to my base, I got the two manas doing it because an imprinted mana is basically jumping death. But the baby was bad, so it got terminated. I looked what I needed for some dedicated storages. And they were actually pretty cheap so I formed some corrupted nodules and had five by the end of the day. I started day 45 with a pretty big metal run because I needed metal. Now going back to my primitive pickaxe and not cutting it anymore for element veins, I figured I can tame one of the mantises in the desert cave. But to tame a mantis you need bug repellent so they don't see you coming from a mile away. And to craft bug repellent you need crops so I started crafting a lot of crop plots. And I did that for the rest of the day because crop plots are one of the most annoying things to craft in the game. Day 46 I finished placing the crop plots but I still need pipes to supply water and a toilet to actually fertilize the plants, but luckily toilets really aren't that hard to craft, so I made one quickly as well as the pipes. <laughs> And after clearing out my intestines, I went on a search for a decent giga to tame, but I didn't find any, so I just spent the rest of the day farming the crop seeds I needed. Another baby mana was born on day 47. It was also slaughtered less than a minute later. I then spent the rest of the day expanding my base platform and crafting some stone railings to make new walls of the hatching area. And that's all I did because I went AFK in my dodix inventory so the game wasn't paused. Day 48 wasn't that commentary worthy, but it was montage worthy. I placed my new tech generator in the morning of day 49. So subsequently, I demolished my gas generator and the little hatching area. Anyways, I spent some time messing around with the generator's range and then spent some more time searching for a giga and actually spotted a level 174. So I trapped a giga nearby where I tamed my snow out with some stone dinosaur gates, and if you don't know, gigas can break through stone structures. So I had to rush back to my base and make metal gates before the giga could destroy the stone ones, but your boy had it all under control because I am speed and I wasn't in render distance so couldn't even bite the gates. And also, I didn't have any narcotics to actually knock out the giga. Didn't really expect to actually find one, so I had to farm those for the rest of the day with my Ankleo. I managed to successfully retrap the giga into metal gates, and the rest of the day went about how you'd expect taming a giga. I shot hundreds of trank darts into it all day long the giga tamed pretty early in the morning of day 51 and i think it came out okay i don't really know anything about giga stats and when i returned to my base i did things like craft myself some more rifle bullets since i spent all the mine crafting trank darts as well as claim another baby mana who didn't actually need to die and i then spent the rest of the day crusading around the map on my giga killing literally everything in sight because it's just something you have to do when you get your first giga i spent the first third of day 52 walking back to my base because gigas are really slow but after all that time away from my base i finally get another baby mana yeah, 
maybe next time. Anyways, I crafted more Trank Darts to tame a Bronto because farming narcotics with my Ankleo is horrible. And I actually found a level 114 towards the end of the day, which is more than good enough for me. The problem isn't knocking it out, it's waiting for it to tame since each berry only gets 2.2 taming percentage. Day 53. Told you this would take a while. Anyway, eventually the Bronto did tame, and I wanted to make a platform saddle, but I needed more silica pearls. And I don't know any great way to get pearls on this map, but I do know you can get silicate, which I have no idea how it works. So I did go to the back of the map and got like two silicate, but I realized I don't need a platform saddle, and I don't know how silica works, so I just went home and crafted a normal saddle. But farming narcotics with a Bronto is so much better. And after that, I farmed some wood and burned it in the forge for charcoal so I can keep crafting bullets. I need more tranks to hopefully tame another male Giga soon so I can start a breed army. I plan to do the Gamma King Titan by the end of these 100 days, so I'm gonna need and start an army as soon as I can. I was back farming wood and killing babies on day 54, you know, just the huge. I want to make a lower level on my base, specifically for baby Giga raising, since they grow up to be really big. I know putting a floor down wasn't really that necessary, but it's kind of just nice to have, so I spent the rest of the day hitting trees, crafting darts, not finding any wild Gigas to tame, smacking rocks, and making stone foundations. Day 55, I finally got a mana worth raising. It had all the good stats, except the weight, which is okay. So yeah, I had to stay around my base for a little while so I could get full imprint on the mana, but I did venture into the sunken forest for some cementing paste, just for general use. Pretty much the entirety of day 56 was spent leveling up my new mana, which I named Land Dragon, because he will be landing and dragging these nuts. I also healed the mana to full health with my Snow Owl, and it was actually pretty efficient, which is nice. With all this wood farming, I want a Thera to help it go by quicker. And I have a Tech Replicator, and I'm still farming wood with a hatchet for some reason. I have to sort out my priorities. But luckily, not too long after of looking, I found a level 162 Thera. Once again, Extinction is blessing me with these high levels. And Thera's are pretty easy to tame, except when you forget narcotics to keep them knocked out, so you have to travel halfway across the map panicking, hoping it doesn't wake up. But they also do take a long time to tame. Thera tamed pretty early into day 50 and i cryo sick day when i got back to base because as i said earlier i have four brain cells left but it's okay i guess because they do wake up fast and eventually when i woke up i started farming wood and it was a really good investment and also one of my best investments was the gas bag seriously even though these things don't reduce weight they're the ultimate loot in wood carriers and i managed to complete my pointless stone platform at the end of the day and craft bug repellent from the crops i started growing earlier on day 59 yeah so I tried taming a mantis with woolly rhino horns that I'm just now realizing I forgot to show me getting them. And not only did that mini rock golem throw a rock at me, I can't actually tame the mantis because they are cave creatures. So yeah, I'm feeling pretty stupid right now. Anyways, I then took my rage out on a wild car car that was blocking giga spawns. And note to myself and to all of you, don't fight wild gigas. Like... Ever. I thought I could kill a level 6 with ease, but my Giga actually ended up nearly dying because of the bleed effect. Seriously, my level 315 Giga nearly died to a level 6, but at least I got a Giga Heart. An OSD fell right from the sky in front of me on day 60, but it was blue, and I'd say I'm above needing to do blue drops right now. And then I really spent the entirety of day 60 looking for a male Giga to tame. And towards the end of the day, I actually grabbed all that I need to actually tame a Giga so what happened last time doesn't happen again. And while I was looking for a good Giga to tame on day 61, I spotted a yellow OSD below the giant rib cage. This my opinion is one of the best places to do an OSC or element vein since it's all flat around it so no dinos can literally jump on top of you. So I returned to my base and healed up my Giga because it was still on life support with the encounter from the wild level 6. And I didn't really have any major problems with this OSC this time around. I brought like 4 velos that weren't really killing anything anymore, they were kind of just a distraction for the corrupted dinos to attack instead of the drop. And when my mana could no longer take down everything with ease, I just threw up my Giga and went to town. I honestly think I did more damage to the drop by accidentally biting it than corrupted dinos did to it. And here is what I got. And also, it must have been my lucky day because I went back to searching for a Giga and there was a level 162 basically waiting for me. Thought I had everything to successfully tame it on me. So I trapped it and started shooting it with Tranks. Notice how I said I thought I had everything I needed to successfully tame the Giga. Yeah, it turns out I don't have like any narcotics to keep the Giga asleep. So I had to return to my base and farm hundreds of narcotics and Trank darts. And I spent the rest of the day shooting the Giga with more darts because it definitely lost a lot of Torpor than the time that I was gone. Day 63 and the Giga actually knocked out way faster than I thought I would. I guess I guess it actually didn't lose that much torpor when I left render distance, and I spent like 10 minutes waiting for the tame, and it came out almost identical to my first Giga, so I'm not gonna spend any time trying to get a perfect breeder set. Anyways, I started incubating the first egg when I returned to my base, but it needs over half an hour to hatch. Once I get a decent supply of these eggs, I'm gonna start doing a few mass hatchings because I simply just can't hatch eggs whenever when they take half an hour to hatch. So while I was waiting for the egg to hatch, I did some organizing around the base and farming some electronics and element dust with my RG and Dota. Day 64 was pretty much all spent raising my baby Giga, and 
imprint on these guys are insane. I crafted a primitive mech on day 65. I had pretty much everything at my base I needed to craft it, so I didn't really have to farm anything besides it for corrupted nodules for like the millionth time. And I named the mech Optimus Prime because the Transformers franchise is the best movie franchise, and I don't care what you say about it. Anyways, the rest of day 65 was spent getting the final two imprints on my Giga and healing it to a somewhat decent HP. And then going out into the wasteland to power level it as well as farm corrupted nodules. I started incubating four Giga eggs on day 66. And this is just an announcement from now on, the whole time I'm doing stuff, my Gigas are breeding and breeding on cooldown. So I was basically producing Giga eggs every day for the rest of these 100 days. And after that, I crafted four fridges because I need more storage for spoilables. And even after that, I got the splitting meat to spoil and farming narco berries and tinto berries for medical brews. I honestly completely forgot about medical brews. I haven't really needed them so far. I also crafted more feeding troughs because baby Gigas go through raw meat faster than I disappear after uploading. I had the four Gigas hatch on day 67, so that also meant I spent the whole day at my base. I know that all of these Gigas are likely gonna die in the King Titan fight, and I could just give them a little bit of food and let them grow without imprint. But 100% imprint gives these guys like an extra 12k health, which might actually allow them to survive another hit or two, so I'm gonna do it because who knows, that extra hit might be the difference of me failing or beating the boss. I found an element vein with 25k health, and I need more element to craft literally anything tech right now, so I'll give it a try. I actually completed the element vein on day 69, and it was actually really easy, I didn't even need to use my Giga. And while I was harvesting the vein, I did get attacked by Corrupted Reaper, but since my mana is an absolute unit, I took it down with ease and got just above 300 elements. So it was a lot better than 10k veins and very much worth doing. But honestly, if I find one, I think I might be able to do a 50k vein. And that was the whole day, because even though element veins and OSDs are super boring, they take forever. When I returned to my base on day 70, I balled out with my new element and crafted myself a whole tech suit. When people ask me how I got this rich, I don't know man, it's just a lifestyle. <laughs> Later on, I checked out the King Titan summon requirements, and yeah, that's... That's a lot of stuff. Moving on, I started incubating seven giga eggs. And since the eggs took forever to incubate, I had time to do a whole metal run. And while I was on said metal run, I spotted a 50k element vein, and I'm totally doing that. I'll probably have to destroy the little veins to protect the big one, but as long as the big one survives, that's still hundreds of element. I did the element vein with ease on day 71. And don't worry, I picked up the giga eggs before I did so. And as I suspected, I did have to destroy most of the little surrounding veins to protect the big one. But it was worth it because look how much element I got. And I even had to fight a random corrupted giga that showed up. I'd say that's revenge though for the one that spawned on top of me doing my first OSD. But after returning to my base, the rest of the day was spent smacking light posts with my dotic for crystal because literally anything tech costs hundreds of crystals to craft. I went back to farming corrupted nodules on day 72 because I want some tech troughs. They have more slots for food and the food lasts longer inside of them so it'll be a good investment. But instead of crafting them right away when I got back to my base, I demolished a part of the hatching area's railings because I want to craft more and expand it. So I expanded the railings along with crafting more air conditioners and tech troughs because I'm just a baller like that. I farmed hide and raw meat on the first part of day 73 when my giga eggs finished incubating but when the eggs did eventually hatch i had to spend the rest of day 73 and the entirety of day 74 and 75 raising them because even with my rates gigas take around 50 to 60 minutes to raise which doesn't sound like a long time but i'm on limited time here people i have things to do titans to kill i healed up one of my gigas on day 76 and cried some velos to do a yellow osd and here's what i got and besides doing these things because they're super easy with a giga and have decent loot my giga also gets a lot of levels doing it so it's just a big win all around now, i basically did the same exact thing on day 77 except this time i found a red drop now from what i know i should be able to successfully solo the drop with a giga if i'm smart never mind i didn't even have to be smart because my giga does more and more damage as i level it up and the corrupted dinos just keep dying faster and faster so it was another walk in the park and after getting stuck on part of the osd that shot off here's what i got yeah i'm gonna be doing a lot more of these red drops like seriously i got a good mana saddle and a mech blueprint this loot is oh. Beautiful. I started the next day with another metal one, because if I want to keep crafting tech stuff, that mech especially, I'm going to need mountains of the stuff. Man, what I do to do one big metal one on Aberration right now? Anyways, after that, I kind of just sat around my base, because you got to slow down every once in a while and really breathe it in. Boy, if you don't- Day 79, I did a red OC, and here's what I got. Okay, next day. Day 80, and the reason I'm so excited is because I'm going to try and tame the Ice Titan today. All I need is a mech with some element, and I should be able to just harness my inner sharpshooter, and bam, the Ice Titan is mine. So I crafted another primitive mech that I named Megadron in case one of mine died. I crafted a primitive one because you don't want to do damage to the actual titan you just want to hit the corrupted nodes and it doesn't matter how good your mech is against the nodes each shot does one damage to it moving on i cryoed up both the mechs and finished gathering the last few theory claws i needed to summon it. all you need to summon the ice titan is 10 theory claws 10 spinal sails 100 corrupted hearts and the artifact that you get in the cave and even after that i began making my way through the surprisingly big cave and i didn't even reach the end by the end of the day i got the artifact on day 81 and summoned the titan and it went a little like this
Meet Snuffles. Since I am the best arc player ever, I managed to get an alpha variant on my first try, meaning it's the strongest it can possibly be. And good thing I brought two mechs as well, or Snuffles would have eaten me a while ago. Anyways, I got Snuffles back to my base and just kind of sat there and admired his size and strength. The King Titan is going to stand no chance. Day 83 in the party isn't stopping now because I want to tame a Forest Titan. I figure if I can have an Alpha Ice Titan, an Alpha Forest Titan, and an Army of Gigas, I would be easily able to whoop the King Titan. So anyway, I farmed the last few remaining corrupted hearts I needed and began clearing my way through the Forest Titan cave at the end of the day. I began taming the Forest Titan on day 84, and it was super easy because the Forest Titan is really slow and its attacks aren't really that threatening. But the thing was, it took two whole days of shooting to tame it. Maybe I was just missing a lot of my shots, but I had to dip into my element reserves that I used for my tech armor. I burned through over like 200 element, but luckily it tamed out an alpha, so it was worth it. Going back to the Forest Titan being really slow, I had to walk it out of the sunken forest, through the wasteland, and into the sanctuary at a basically penguin waddle speed. And now that more of half of my day was gone, I started doing a 25k element vein, because you can never have too much element. But don't get too excited, because while I was almost finished with the vein on day 87, this happened. What? Yeah, despawned literally in front of my eyes because apparently I was too far away from it. I feel like I wasn't even that far. Anyways, after that preposterous disappointment, I began incubating more Giga Eggs for another mass hatching. I think after these Gigas would be fully grown, I would have about 20 Battle Gigas, but I'm not sure because counting was never my best thing. And I also did a meat run to feed the babies and added some more wooden stairs to the hatching platform just to make it more convenient for myself. I did some berry farming in the morning of day 88 to keep my berry eating boys fed and for more medical brews. Also, look how many Giga Eggs I have now, and I still have the ones incubating. And speaking of the ones I have incubating, they were starting to hatch and I spent the rest of day 88 and the entirety of day 89 raising them as well. And I also named all my Gigas Titan Killer and then whatever number. I don't really know, I was just bored. Okay, day 90 and I have some explaining to do. So as I said earlier, I've never done a full playthrough on Extinction before this video. And for some of you experienced arc players, you probably realized my mistake a few days ago. You need the trophy of each Titan to spawn the King Titan. And I have two of the Titans tamed. You're supposed to spawn the Titan and kill it, and then spawn another later on and tame it to fight the boss. So yeah, the two Titans I have now are basically useless and they have to die. So I can then spawn another of each Titan to kill, and then I have to spawn even another to tame. And about killing the Gamma King Titan by by the end of these 100 days, yeah. I'm not sure that's gonna be possible. But moving on to stuff I actually did on day 90, I tamed the level 132 Quetzal I found. Since I need to kill all three Titans, a Desert Titan included, I had the idea of putting the Giga on the back of the Quetzal and just letting it bite to death. It sounds pretty dumb, but I watched one YouTube video on it from four years ago, so I know it has to work. But when I got the platform saddle on the Quetzal, I quickly ran into the issue of not being able to place enough structures. And it won't let you place gates on it, so this is not gonna work. So knowing that my Quetzal strategy won't work, I did a bit more research and saw that I should be able to just shoot down the Titan with my mech gun. But something that would even make that faster is a better mech, so I farmed hundreds of corrupted nodules and corrupted hearts and crafted the ramshackle mech blueprint I had. The Mastercraft one was way too expensive, and I had to farm some of the tributes like Sarko skin, so I spent the rest of the day doing that. After gathering all the tributes I needed, I got everything I needed from my base and started making my way through the desert cave. I brought like 400 element just in case, but I don't think I'll need near that much. And the desert cave was much shorter than the others, so I made it through by the end of the day and summoned the desert titan. And there was a pillar I could stand on with my mech and shoot the titan, but it wouldn't be able to come near me. Basically, I have over 200 IQ. I killed the Titan in the morning of day 93 and got some pretty bad loot, but I got the trophy I needed, so that's all that matters. And I spent the rest of the day leveling up a Giga by doing a red OSD because I just couldn't resist. And I was also farming corrupted hearts now because I was summoning Titans left and right and I was burning through them faster than I could possibly farm them over time. And here's what I got from the OSD. I'm not excited for day 94. Today is the day I decided to sacrifice my tame Titans to the corrupted zone so I can spawn some other ones to kill. It took the whole day to get both Titans back in the zone and have their 400k health eaten down by a combination of corrupted rexes and gigas and i'm not gonna lie i was actually pretty sad but things get worse before they get better right now that my titans were in the bellies of corrupted gigas in the wasteland i could spawn new ones in the kill with my gigas and get the trophy and i'm not gonna lie i don't know how these boss fights will go i had about 20 gigas ready to go with saddles but that's still a whole titan they have to take down anyway i decided to get the tributes for the force titan first and then threw out all my gigas at the spawn zone and then going into the cave for the second time to summon it
So yeah, that was way easier than I thought it would be, and turns out the combination of gigas and boosted single player settings are really good. Well, after that easy fight, I cryoed up all my gigas and returned to my base to deposit the bad loot. And after that, I killed more theories for their claws so I can summon the ice titan. But now, I have basically zero corrupted hearts, so I spent the rest of the day killing corrupted dinos and most of day 97 doing the same. But I also did start another 25k element vein later in the day because I have to make a boss fight happen at the end of the video. And I'm kind of addicted to having element. I'm kind of like Rockwell at this point. Day 98? and after harvesting my element and dropping it off on my base, I delivered my gigas to the ice titan spawn and then began waking my way through the cave. Seriously, this cave is massive and takes forever to get through. The size of it feels comparable to the size of Aberration. A99 and you guys know how this goes. I have to kill that titan right there and he can freeze my army, but I can't freeze him. That was also way easier than I thought it would be. So I returned to my base and lined up my gigas so they could heal and uh, yeah. Day 100. Yay.